Uh, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to Thursday Night Live here uh, for Click Track Profit as well. Uh, and we're on Facebook, we're on the Steam blockchain, we're everywhere and anywhere you want us to be. I'm John. Uh, honor, grateful, thankful that you guys decided to spend your uh, your evening here, your evening here with me. Uh, lots to talk about, lots to discuss. Um, let me uh, let me put it this way. I'm going to frame. We're going to. It's it's kind of going to be a smorgasbord of topics, but hopefully I can connect every single topic so it will flow miraculously from one to the other. We hope. As you guys know, uh, every two weeks on uh, on DTube and YouTube, I do a, a do a book review, uh, and I'm and I'm almost done this. So I got a book review that I'm uh, that I'm that's due tomorrow, uh, and and it's a book I picked up a couple of weeks ago on one of my trips to the. Uh, to the the bookstore and as you guys know i'm a i'm a big fan of of content creation that's kind of what what we believe in at ctp what we're trying to push people towards uh because so many good things happen when we uh when we focus on content creation so part of good content creation is storytelling so i found this book uh and it's by two authors uh two ladies named i, I i'm gonna destroy this lady's name so i apologize a katrina a Katrina Walter and Jessica Gioglio. I, I'm, I'm destroying their last names. Hi, Rick. Welcome. Uh, but uh, a really fascinating book. It's called The Laws of Brand Storytelling, right? Uh, win and Keep Your Customers' Hearts and Minds. Really, really cool book. Uh, hi, Mark. Welcome. So I, I'm, I'm almost done it. It's, it's not the best book. Hi, Bridget. Welcome. It's not, it's not the best book I've ever read uh, about storytelling and branding, but it's a very solid, solid book. And, it, and it's, it's broken up into about six or seven chapters, really good information. Uh, but what I found with this is that it's more, it's more storytelling than anything, like thus the brand of storytelling. But it's talking, it talks about real world examples and real examples in uh companies and how they're using brand storytelling in their business so the review for the the full review will be tomorrow uh on dtube so you can look forward to that because i got about maybe 50 pages left to read so i'll get through that tonight uh but uh yeah so this is what i'm taking i got I, I printed something out from this book that i wanted to discuss with you guys kind of how we've been, if you've, you know, you've seen the rebuild of click track profit and you've seen that we're really pushing people towards content creation. Uh, I thought this was uh, an amazing, and it was on page 119 and I'll, I'll just recite this to you guys and, and we'll, we'll discuss it. So <clears throat> there's a funny thing that happens when you prioritize helping over selling, you actually sell more. Here's why. By educating and inspiring, you become a trusted company that people follow and subscribe to for content. The company that gets invited to speak at events or conduct workshops. The more you build credibility through helping and adding value, the easier it is to build a tribe that f further amplifies your message, creating a powerful halo effect for both your brand and the products or services you offer. So I read this, right? And it was actually in the chapter of developing your story because people, right? Like people do business with those they know, like, and trust, right? We know this. We've, we've, we've gone over this countless times and they don't want to do business with faceless companies, uh, the standard affiliate page. They don't want to do business with, with that type of presentation what do they they want to be pulled in they want to feel a part of something and that is what storytelling does for your content absolutely mark 100 percent. and and so I'm, I'm framing this two ways one it's like this is a massive nugget for us to know that our job as marketers is not to be the faceless representation of a company, but to be someone who people can know, like, and trust or relate to, right? And it's done through the content you're putting out, through the marketing you're doing, uh, through the blog posts, the, the social media stuff that you're sharing. It's done through that. But here's the point of this, this little tidbit that I thought was amazing. 
stop selling, start helping, right? This whole chapter, I got to frame the chapter. The chapter was talking about how, you know, a big, a really good game plan for content creation is to create helpful videos, helpful to do things, helpful uh, uh, different uh, types of, of, of training and, and, and that will help your customers learn something new. And this is something that I really believe um, is critical in, in 2019 is that we need to help more and in the process we'll actually sell more. Now, I, I don't have the stats. I, I'm not, I, I don't, you know, this is maybe a whole lot of, you know, uh, mumbo jumbo. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't have the stats to back this up. But what I do have is kind of what this, with, what this thing talks about here on the, on the front page of the book. Uh, win and keep your customers' hearts and minds. See, that's, that, you can't measure that, right? You can't, it's, it's Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk famously said, you know, what's the ROI of your mother? right? You, you cannot analyze or track the return on investment in what Sean just said, relationships. There's, there's no way to do it. How can, how, can I, how can I describe the ROI of my wife's and I's relationship, right? You can't track that, right? There's no, there's no sale that can be made there. Well, I guess, you know, put the ring on it. <laughs> but the point being is, when you focus on the relationships and, and the mindset is to help your customers first, you know what? You might not be the most shared person in the world. You know, you might not get 10,000 people coming to your, to your live events. You, you may not be uh, the sexiest person in affiliate marketing because you're not really pitching the dream, right? Like, I hope you guys know that you guys come to these events. I'm not trying to sit here and say, hey, you know what? Just buy, you know, upgrade a click track profit. Uh, spend the money in traffic wave and, uh, you know, and, and buy the, the hits connect upgrade and you're going to be a success overnight. Like I, I hope, I hope I come across as someone who's trying to be completely truthful. The truth of the matter is this stuff takes work. It's a lot of effort. It's a whole lot of grunt work. It's getting your, you know, your hands dirty and putting elbow grease into it. It's a lot of effort, but there's something that doesn't cost money that can never really be measured, but has huge lasting impact on your journey. And, and that is relationships. And if, we've, if we frame it, if we build businesses, right? If we build businesses with the mindset of helping our customers first, just like you said, Sean, the sales will follow. That's my opinion. And that's what I got from this, this little tidbit that, was, that uh, the authors wrote in the laws of uh, brand storytelling. And I wanted to discuss it with you guys tonight. I'm just going to read uh, here. She let you live almost every night. Your wife needs, uh, she, oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, she, she understands, Mark. My, my, my wife understands. She basically taps me on the, on the back and says, go do your thing, buddy. <laughs> go do your, she's, she's, a, she's a great woman. She's, she doesn't require a lot in life. She just wants to make sure her kids are taken care of. And you know what? Every now and again, she gets a lottery ticket. I don't get it. I don't get lottery. Do you? She loves it. I just, just the scratch and wins. I just, I don't get it. I never understood it. Anyways. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly that, Jen. It's, it's focusing on producing valuable content. And this is what this chapter was about, which was really cool. Right. Um, and it talked about sharing your creative journey as well. Uh, a lot of times people struggle on what's their story. And, and what was really cool about this book was it was talking about your story doesn't have to go viral. You know, your story doesn't have to attract 10,000 people. Uh, your story doesn't need to be, uh, you know, Hollywood blockbuster-esque. It doesn't need to be that. It just needs to be unique to you. It needs to be unique to you. And when we find that story, see, for example, Jen. Jen has the pixie story, right? She's kind of transformed that into her own little brand, and she's run with it. It's, it's, not, it's not like she's getting 10,000 people following her, but it's unique to her. It's, it's authentic. And she's building the relationships through that. And this is what this is what this this chapter was talking about was that you, it doesn't need to be something that someone in Hollywood will make a movie about. It doesn't have to go viral. You, when you focus on enough people, for example, okay, uh, I'm kind of all over the place, right? As I would be on Thursday nights. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you guys saw what I what my little new plan is for customer service. So a big part of what I want to bring to people on ClickTrack Profit is. 
I really need to win some fans back. You guys know the click track profit history was a disaster. The, the, the program, the company that owned it previous, it was just a, it was a mess. It was a disaster. It crumbled. We left a lot of people hanging out to dry. So I've got a lot of building bridges back work I have to do. So my opinion is obviously showing up every day. I mean, showing up every day, working with you guys, that that's, that's part of the equation. Um, but hi, Bonnie, welcome. But it, it has to be a little bit more than that. So I had the idea, I said, you know what, let me do something completely unique and something different for customer service. So what I'm gonna do, because I truly believe in this, you can run your business with your phone. What I'm gonna start doing, which I'm trying to integrate into my brand and the storytelling of the CTP brand, is that we care. We actually want you guys to succeed. And like, without a shadow of a doubt, we're going to be there for you every step of the way. That's, that's our game plan. So the idea was this. When someone sends in a support ticket, when people send in a support ticket, they're generally frustrated. Let's be honest. Something isn't working for them, right? Something isn't the, you know, working. They're, they're stuck on something. But how do I not only show these people that they're valued, but also lessen their stress a little bit, right? Like lessen the, uh, the viciousness, not saying that they're, they're vicious, but when you send in a support ticket, something's wrong and you're frustrated or you can't figure something out. So there's a little bit of tension. So how do I do, so how do I lessen that? Well, I, th I thought, you know what, what, what can I, how can I do this? I'll take my phone and I got this fancy dancy little microphone. So it's a, it's a road microphone. It's really cool. It plugs into the bottom of my phone. Uh, and, and I will basically, as I'm responding to the customer, I will send them a personalized video. I'll say, Hey, how you doing? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you follow the link that I'll provide in the bottom of this video, you'll see the ticket that you can open up and you'll see that we've fixed your problem. So it's a personalized response to customer service right? It takes me about 30 seconds to record the video. I can do all of the editing on my phone with iMovie, maybe an extra minute. So an extra minute and a half of effort to send these people just a little short 30 second video that says, hey, we fixed the problem or we're working on it, but we value you. We're here to help you. And this is how much we're here to help you. We're going to send you a personalized video to tell you that we're working on the problem. Right now, do I have the metrics for this? Do I have the analytics for this? Is this worth my time? Is it scalable? I mean, all of these things go in your head when you're, when you're setting things up like that. But you remember what I just discussed. Am I helping people? Right? Am I helping people? That is the core function of why I'm doing something like that. It might not go viral. It might not do anything. It might, you know, it might just get someone to not hate me tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, let's be honest. There's a lot of things that a lot of people would say that's a waste of time, not really worth it. It's not scalable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the thing. To me, it, it, it's exactly that. It's exactly that. It, it, two things there. It shows Bonnie exactly. It shows that there's a human behind the screen. There's someone who's actually answering the support tickets. It's not just a generic, oh, click here or go read our facts if you need help. I'm reading every single, single support ticket. Builds credibility, just like Sean said. But it comes back to the point that we talked about. It's helping people. It's putting the help in front of people so the sales may come but I'm not doing it to make sales. I'm doing it because if you remember, like I said, there's a lot of bridges I need to rebuild. There's a lot of mending fences I need to do. And if I do that and show people that what happened in the past was an abomination, that is not the norm, is not how, I, how we operate at Click Track Profit, it will build the confidence and the credibility, like you said, Sean, so that you know what? Maybe, uh, what's the famous quote? Um, I think Jeff Bezos said it. Uh, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, right? So if I'm doing this, hopefully crossing fingers, again, I don't have the analytics. I don't have the proof for this. This is just me 
trying to keep your heart and mind loving me um, is that when someone out there says CTP is this or that, there's someone who's had a really good experience that goes, no, actually CTP is this. This is what CTP is. That's the game plan. So again, the message is, how, how, the, the lesson is, how can you guys do something like this that helps people on their journey, right? It puts the focus on the customer. It helps them. It builds their business. It helps them have a better experience. And Intune helps you. It's a win-win. So we're all so worried about selling. Sell this, sell that. We need to make offers. We need to do this. We need to do that. What can you concentrate on? You can concentrate on the experience that your customers or your subscribers have when they deal with you. Make it memorable. Make it remarkable. Make it epic. It doesn't cost money. That's the big thing. Like for me to do this doesn't cost a single penny. It's my phone. I use my phone. I re hey, I upload the video. I edit the video on my phone, which the software came with my phone. I send it to my uh, computer and I upload it. I could even upload it onto my through my phone if I want, but I'll just, I just like being more productive on my, my computer, but I can do everything on my phone. I can edit everything on my phone. It takes me about a minute and a half to bang out one of those videos. So, well, ab absolutely, Steven, because there, there's so many reasons, like you could list them, right? Like why on the dog starts barking. So the doorbell has, has started. So apologies in advance for the dogs. Um, but this is the thing what we just talked about. You can make a list of the reasons why this stuff won't work, right? It's not scale. That's the big one, right? It's not scalable because th let's be brutally honest. If I was having 20 to 30 support tickets come through the system every day, that's not scalable. That's a whole lot of time that is just like, you know, that's a lot of time invested in creating videos and responding, but click track profit works pretty good. We might have one or two support tickets every couple of days. So it's nothing for me to spend five minutes doing this. And for me, the ROI is this. I don't care about how much money I make. I just want to get people liking me again. <laughs> That's the big thing. Uh, okay. Uh, modeling Russell Brunson the other way. Analyzing every breath he does. Um, oh, well, I mean, you know, Russell's just, you know, the smartest guy in the room, man. Um, I mean, dude's, dude's an absolute genius. I mean, if, if you know, if, if we all strive to be – one tenth of what uh, Russell has done with his business, uh, we'd be all pretty good. Um, but don't try to compare yourself to people. That's the problem. Is is that you know, Mark is Mark, right? Bonnie is Bonnie. Jen is Jen. Stephen is Stephen. Sean is Sean. John is John. Um, and and that's unique. Our 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 ability to create and craft stories for our own brand is is the opportunity. I believe. Um, yeah, I'm not in, I'm not in click funnels either. Uh, I don't know anything to be brutally honest with you. I don't know anything about click funnels other than it's the most talked about thing on the lead program management program and funnel building system outline. I've never logged in. I've never been a member, so nothing against it. It's just, I've never been a part of it. Um, well that's, and, and Sean and see that that's, what's crazy is that just answering support tickets. Well, this is how much of an opportunity it is, but almost how sad it is for the state of the industry. Most people won't even respond to support tickets. So imagine if you, first of all, just if you respond to support tickets, you're ahead of the game. Now, if you do something like just sending us a, a little personalized YouTube video, Hey, well, here's the, here's the other thing. And I didn't even mention this. And this is, this is funny. Um, I'm uploading every single one of those videos to YouTube, right? Videos are about 30 seconds long. I want to have a portfolio of these on our click track profit channel, not necessarily so that it'll go viral and I don't divulge anything private in the videos. It's usually just go to this. If there's anything that they need to do with their account, I say, go to the support ticket and I'll describe it. But the hopes is, is that again, they get shared and not that they go viral, but it's, it's ammunition for someone that says, Oh, click track profit is this look, look what they've done. Look what they do. That's, that's another hope. Another hope for having a, a portfolio and a track record of responding through uh, video responses is that it'll show people that we're not this evil empire that, that might have been before. Right. So. Absolutely, Sean. And you know, what's funny is, is it's actually sped up, right? Uh, back in the day, 
uh, a support ticket responded to within a couple of days was astronomically good support. Then it turned into within 24 hours was astronom astronomically uh, good support. Now it's within hours. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but for, for a company, let's say like your internet service provider or your cable provider, if you don't get answers within the seconds, you get frustrated. It's, it's the way of the world. It's the way the customer support is going. It's the way that uh, social media is going. And I'm not saying that it's scalable for someone who's a one man or one woman operation. Uh, but within hours is, is, is good. Hi, Madeline. Welcome. <clears throat> so I, I'm all for, um, you know, responding. I, I try to get them within 24 hours guaranteed, uh, but I'm pretty much on top of it. It, it, it gets answered. It, the only time it might go longer than a couple of hours is if I'm sleeping, right? Because the support tickets at CTP, there's not really many. Uh, everything at CTP kind of works. Thank you, Blaine. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, just answering your tickets is, is massive, right? That just shows people that uh, you uh, absolutely care. Absolutely care. And that's, that's big. That's huge. Um, so that, that was, that was the, again, the, the book review will be tomorrow. Um, the laws of brand storytelling. Again, I can't pronounce these authors names to save my life. It's uh, Katriana, Katriana Walter and Jessica Gioglio. Uh, I'm, I'm destroying these ladies names, but um, it's an interesting book. Again, it's not the best book I've read on branding. Uh, the 22 Immutable Laws of Branding by Al Rees is the gold standard, in my opinion, uh, of branding. But it's a, it's a really good book about uh, real case studies for brand storytelling, which is really important. Um, and I thought this little lesson would go good with tonight uh, because, uh, again, it, it, we're, always so, we're so worried about selling, right? We're so worried about how do we do better sales? How do we do better opt-ins? How do we get more people subscribing? Well, how about we worry about helping people more? If we set up our entire content marketing strategy, um, list building strategy, all of this stuff with helping people, then it, it, it just makes sense to me, right? It just makes sense to me that this should be the focus, helping, not selling, because when you help, the sales will come. Anywho, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm gonna switch it up a little. Uh, I know that Thursdays we usually focus on affiliate marketing, um, but I, I was kind of inspired yesterday on the owner's meeting to a little, talk a little bit more about crypto. Hope you guys are okay with that. Um, and I was, I was just doing some homework and thinking out loud today. Like, what could I, what could I share with you guys? Because affiliate marketers, we're in a really unique position, right? I mean, this is, this is something that our industry is always evolving. It's always changing. And like I said last night, if you guys came by the show, you'll know that we are notorious as affiliate marketers for being reactive and not proactive, right? We always want to see what other people, let other people go take the risks before we jump into something, right? Let's, let's let, let that person go and fail miserably before we take a little bit of action. Let's see what they did wrong before we go and take a risk, right? So <clears throat> I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, you know what, this, this cryptocurrency thing, this is like this massive opportunity, right? I mean, it's just this, it's, it's the, the biggest opportunity since like the internet came to be so popular, right? In like the mid nineties, late nineties. This is just this huge, huge opportunity. And this is, it, it made me think of a quote, right? And you, <laughs> I love these quotes. From Wayne Gretzky, out of all people, right? The Canadian is going to quote the hockey player. I mean, can you get any more, like, am I just, I'm just becoming the, the gold standard here of typical Canadian references. This is actually a really good quote, actually, from Wayne Gretzky. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't know what it's exactly, but it's, uh, Wayne Gretzky was asked back in the 80s, like, why is he so effective as a hockey player? Uh, and he said he goes to where the puck is going, not where it's been, All right? Hi, Rob, welcome. So you think about that. Go where the puck is going, not where it's been. Where it's been is in the past. Where it's going is the future. So what does this have to do with, with tonight's talk? Well, where the puck is going is crypto and blockchain. That's where it's going. Where it's been is where the stick in the muds are. 
where there are, this doesn't work and it sucks. Those people. That's, that's where it's been. So as entrepreneurs, as affiliate marketers, we want to be proactive in the forefront, right? Exactly like you said, Bonnie, get ahead of it. We want to be ahead of the curve, right? Check this out. I've, I shared this with you guys a couple of months ago. Uh, I was reading this book here, uh, Blockchain, The Next Everything. This one right here. Blockchain, The Next Everything. Really, really good book. Really, uh, really easy to read too. Stephen P. Williams did a review of it uh, a couple of um, a couple of months back. Really, really good. I, I got this example from this book. <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to break this down to you guys to show you the power and the potential of what blockchain is going to represent in the future. What's the big thing now? Gig economy, right? And everybody know, if I, if I say gig economy, you guys understand what I'm saying, right? Gig economy. So Uber drivers, um, consultants, Fiverr gigs, um, skip the dishes or, or food delivery drivers, right? That's, that's a gig economy. Gig economy is basically saying that in 2019, you don't need to have a typical nine to five to survive. You just need to have gigs. You need to be a gig economy, get paid to do this, get paid to do that, using what you have to, um, to get paid and stuff. So this is kind of the new norm for a lot of millennials to love this stuff. Like, you know, they'll sleep in till, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon and go deliver Uber for the next five hours. And then, you know, or skip the dishes or whatever. But anywho, so instant services, exactly, one. So from this book, I was discussing this thing called smart contracts. This is a blockchain term, and I don't want to get too confusing with you guys, but basically a smart contract is, is uh, something has started, something happens, and then at the end of it, it confirms that this has happened, and it's rewarded, and it's unlocked, in a nutshell. So it's, it's a proof of actually completing something. Smart contracts set up, it's executed, and then at the end, it is, it's verified that this has been done. And this is all done on the blockchain. This is what this book talked about. And when I thought about this, and, I, and I've discussed this before, it blew my mind. And I'm going to try to explain it to you guys so it blows your mind too. We are in the era now, okay, of driverless cars, right? We're in the era of Amazon drones flying around delivering home packages. This isn't science fiction. This stuff exists now. This is where we're going. This is where the puck is going. Okay? This is where the puck is going. There will be a time in the very near future where a driverless car is set up on a blockchain and set up with a smart contract that it will basically run 24-7, 365, be paid on the blockchain with the smart contract. It will complete a contract. It will make the money from it. And then it comes to be where this car will start buying its own cars, right? To create a fleet of delivery cars, delivery cabs, delivery services, you name it, that doesn't need human interaction at all. Now, a lot of people say this is scary. This is terrifying. This is Terminator. This is Skynet. This is the end of humanity, which it may be. I have nothing to do with it. I'm not concerned about that. This is what I see as opportunity, though. Someone needs to purchase that first car. Someone needs to purchase that first contract. Someone needs to start thinking like that for when this stuff starts, because what's going to happen is the car will eventually buy itself out from ownership. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's mind blowing to think that this is where not, not 20 years down the road, 20 months. <laughs> like This is not 10 years or 30 or 40 years in the future. The blockchain is able to do this now, and the self-driving cars are able to do it very soon. This is, this is where the puck is going, not where it's been. Again, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just, th I'm just throwing it out there as something to think about. <laughs> like, 
the cars will buy themselves. They will fix themselves. They will gas themselves. They will, if there's an issue with them, they'll, they can drive themselves to the garage and the garage will fix them. This is all able to happen now. So you gotta, you gotta wonder like, where am I putting, and this is kind of, again, I'm, I'm all over the place, but this is making a lot of sense in my mind. I hope, I hope you guys understand that in my head, this is a really huge nugget lesson. Where the puck is going, not where it's been. So where it's been is a guy saying, I'm going to be a taxi driver. Where it's been is saying, a lady saying, I'm going to start delivering for Skip the Dishes or, or DoorDash or wherever you guys got in the States. Tech is taking over. Exactly, Bridget. That's where it's been. <laughs> that's where it's been it's been at those places it's it's like you feel sorry for them but think think of going to walmart you know what what's taking over at walmart you know people complain that there's never anybody working the tills at walmart that's why they have all the money have you guys seen what they're building in walmart now it's the self-checkout aisles right it's the self-checkout aisles where it's been is the cashier where it's going is the self-checkout aisles. The tech is taking over. And what's going to be behind that tech? It's not going to be PHP coding and HTML5. It's going to be blockchain technology. It will be the blockchain. Everything, because remember what a blockchain is, it's a ledger, right? It's a ledger. That's what, it's, it's, it's a ledger. It's strip away all the fancy dancy stuff about blockchain. That's what it is. Does the ledger balance itself? That's it. If it is, it's consensus and it moves forward on the blockchain. That's, that's what a blockchain is. So the technology, all of this stuff, where the puck is going, is going to be built on blockchain. That's why I'm so animate about you guys getting involved, if you're affiliate marketers, into the tech side of it. Get into the blockchain side of it. Because that's where it's going. It's not where it's been. Oh, it's because Mark, nothing fascinates me more. I, I, I mentioned this too. If you guys know my history, you know that I was involved in traffic exchanges basically since day one. Uh, when I first discovered traffic exchanges, and this was back in like 1999-ish, maybe 98, depends. I was hooked because I saw that as a way to promote anything you ever wanted. And the internet was becoming this thing. And I was hooked on the internet. And I was just, I saw this opportunity saw it. I was absolutely fascinated by it. Now, the problem with affiliate marketing slash TEs is that it didn't go where the puck was going. It was always stuck where it's been. Blockchain is where it's going. So for me, I am, I'm, an, I'm a kid in a candy store when it comes to blockchain and, and Steam too, because Steam to me is people. Remember we talked about the first lesson was about helping people. How do we help people? Well, we help people through Steam. Because look, again, click track profit, it's set up for you guys to win, right? The entire process of CTP is saying, click, track, profit. Okay, you've got the click, how do you get the clicks? How do you get the traffic to your website? Well, social media, content creation. Okay, cool. Well, what do you track? Well, you track this, this, and this. Okay, tracking, I get it. Profit, how do you do it? Content marketing. You create content that draws people towards you. Well, that's fine and dandy, John and Blaine, but if you don't have 10,000 subscribers or 10,000 subscribers on your YouTube channel, no one's going to show up. No one's going to care. No one's going to pay you. No one's going to pay attention. No problem. Don't worry. We've got this thing called CTP Talk. CTP Talk is really cool. You want to know why? Because it's on the Steam blockchain. That's right. It's blockchain based. You get rewarded for creating on the blockchain. You get little high fives, little tokens, little rewards all the time for creating. It's worth real money. <laughs> That's the thing, right? It's not worth a lot of money. CTP token is not, we're not Bitcoin here, but it's worth real money. You can actually stack up enough CTP tokens to trade it in and make some money from it. Lots of people do. I know Zoltan does it. I know Jen does it. I know the people inside of CTP, the community, the tribe are still exchanging it all the time for Steam where they can cash out. So we've set it up so that you get all the training we're helping enough people get there but then this perfect match this match made in heaven is hey you're an affiliate marketer 
Okay, let's, let's do the Wayne Gretzky thing. Let's go where the puck is going now, not where it's been, right? Let's look into this blockchain stuff. Let's seriously start creating on the blockchain because we're plugging ourselves into the technology that is going to be here for years and years and years. On top of that, we're plugging into an amazing, supportive, thriving community of Steemians. That's why I think it's the perfect mix. That's why I want as many people as possible creating on CTP Talk so that you start getting a little bit more confidence. Uh, you start saying, you know what, this is actually okay. I get this content marketing stuff. Oh, okay. I got to create. I got to create every day. I create every day. I'm going to attract more people. Hmm, cool. Now it's on the blockchain. I've got this huge portfolio of amazing stuff I've done over the year on my journey here. And I've built these relationships with these amazing people throughout, you know, throughout this entire process. To me, it's just, it's just a, to me, it's just this perfect scenario for affiliate marketers. It's just, it, it reeks of perfection for affiliate marketers. So, um, yeah. And yeah, absolutely. You can learn, you can learn Java. You can learn all sorts of stuff on Code Academy. Um, W3 schools too. This is the thing. Exactly, Zoltan, without fees for transactions. Yes, absolutely. Big, the big plus. The, the, what, did, what did I read this week? Bitcoin just reached 1 billion in transaction fees. There's no transaction fees on Steam. <laughs> Zero. Doesn't cost anything to use it. If you want to send and receive Bitcoin, you, it's proof of work. So you've got to pay to use the network. And that comes in the form of transaction fees. Um, so, um, yeah. Well, that's, that's just in Steve, Steven, because that's the best part about Steam, right? The best part about Steam is you don't have to be the writer. You can be a curator. And as long as you have staked tokens, you get rewarded for the curation. On Steam, it's 50-50. 50% goes to the author, 50% goes to the curators. On CTP, we got it 60-40. So 60% goes to the creator, 40% to the curators. So you get rewarded just by liking other people's stuff. I mean, it's just, it, to me, Steam is just a no-brainer, especially for affiliate marketers. Like, what an amazing place to build. I highly recommend it, too, for each one of you guys. Look into it. You can build your own token on Steam. SMTs are coming. You can do it on Steam Engine like CTP Talk is done right now, but SMTs are just around the corner. SMTs are creating your own token and just going nuts with it. So, yes, exactly, Mark. Okay, so... Proof of work, right? Proof of work, the blockchain, like Bitcoin is the biggest proof of work and there's Ethereum and all this stuff. Well, no, Ethereum's different, but proof of work, uh, Litecoin's another proof of work, right? The fees go to the miners to secure the network, right? That's what, what, a, what you're doing when, when, when you're mining Bitcoin is you're just verifying transactions. And that's what it is. So you're verifying transactions and when you, you, you unlock it and you find a Bitcoin, that's your reward for the miners. But the fees go uh, to the network. So the tr it's, you know, it, the transactions are rewarded. So there's actually someone who's got a miner because it spend, it costs a lot of money, right? To actually have these things working, a lot of electricity. They want to be paid for it, proof of work. Well, this is why I, I like Steam because Steam, you're, you're still mining Steam. This is, the, not, this is the big thing, right? People are like, well, mining Bitcoin sounds really fun, but I don't have the, the you know, the thousand or $2,000 for the miner plus the $500 or something a month in electricity it'll cost. Well, you actually mine Steam by creating content. You're rewarded on Steam, proof of brain. That's the, the it's proof of, delegated proof of stake, but it's also proof of brain, which is this concept that the Steam blockchain came up with. So if you are creating content and I see it and I like it, I am verifying to the network that you are someone who has created something of value. You've added to the blockchain. I upvote you you get rewarded and I get rewarded as well. In a nutshell, I know it's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but that's why Steam is so exciting to me and so attractive to me because you don't need to go and spend, you know, thousands of dollars on miners. <laughs> so, so, you know, well, you can do it, Steven. I mean, that's, that's the thing. You, you can do it. You can create your own token on the Steam blockchain. You can do an SMT or you can do a Steam engine token like I did. And you can create your own token that is rewarded. Now, this is the problem. This is the, the only problem with this, and, and this, is, this is an issue, is that I, do, I don't think everything in the world needs to be on the blockchain, right? 
I don't think so. I don't think everything needs to be on the blockchain. It, it can become information overload for some people. Like just go to Steam Engine, you'll see thousands of these tokens. I mean, there's literally a token called Ass Token. Poop Token. I'm not saying that there's not a real world case, use case for that, but it's just, there's a whole lot of mumbo jumbo out there. Does your token deliver value, right? I mean, that's the thing. Like for me, the, the goal for CTP token is I want it to be integrated inside of ClickTrack Profit. So it's proof of education. Uh, that's a term I kind of came up with. Maybe someone else did too, but basically proof of action. So someone does a lesson, they're, they're confirmed on the blockchain. It rewards them with CTP tokens for taking action or, or learning something. So that's my concept. That's what I want to see with CTP. So ask yourself, can you put your token in a use case, right? Yeah, Trump coin, exactly. Is there a use case for my token? Well, in your example, this is what you could do. Surf 50 pages a day. Prove that you've surfed 50 pages a day. Bam, there's a real world use case. So it's an advertising token. Pixie coin, yeah, Pixie coin. Jen, you're in a very unique position because you can, you can, you can reward those, right? You can reward those for people signing up to your list, subscribing to your social media sites um, as, as a reward system. You can, you can create your own little reward coin. Uh, hey, you know, like sign up. I mean, again, it, it, we don't need to revolutionize the world here with the ideas for our coins, but there's nothing stopping us from creating our own. I mean, especially with the Steam prices now, I think Steam is 15 cents or something right now. I mean, to start a coin is, I think, 150 Steam. So I think that's probably around 25 bucks-ish. Or maybe it's a little bit more. I think it's 100, 150 Steam, I think. When I started, when I started the Steam Savvy coin, I think Steam was like a buck or something like that, right? So, or less. It might have been a little bit less than all. Anyways, I know this, this talk has been all over the place. I totally know. We, we started talking about branding and storytelling and, and um, uh, <clears throat> you know, how to do this. That's a fantastic domain name, Mark. You own that? Oh, my gosh, dude. That is like, that is a killer. That's a killer you, you, uh, domain name, dude. The four-letter domain names are priceless i don't know if you're getting offers for it yet but that's that's a really good one man very cool four letter domains are tough um but yeah i know we've been all over the place um you know helping people instead of selling uh sharing the example i'm doing for this for the customer service stuff and then even talking about smart contracts and d driverless delivery cars and cabs and where and even talked about wayne gretzky i mean if that's not an exciting night i don't know what is anyways if you guys are watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to shut down the recording. We're still live streaming though. So thank you guys for watching uh, on uh, YouTube, Toodles, and we'll see you next week.